Hey everyone, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com, and this is my NeuroCore series covering Gillian Barre, where I cover the seven most important things about this condition and the management of it. It not only includes the videos, but my study sheets found on NursingCamp.com and my clinical resources. So let's get into it. Okay, nurses, this is Nursing Camp, and this is what you should know about Gillian Barre, where I cover the seven most important things about this condition. Uh, the overview, the phases, how to test and treat it, management of ventilation, recovery, relapse, and then the nursing seven, where I break it all down in regards to this condition. Now, Gillian Barre is an autoimmune condition, which basically means that your body attacks itself as a foreign entity. When we're talking about Gillian Barre, on the general overview, think ground to brain, then brain to ground. What goes up then goes down. So what that means is, is that a person with Gillian Barre generally will have bilateral weakness from the ground up. And that's called ascending weakness. And that's an interesting thing is, is as what the what the parallelization will start to do is, is this weakness will start to progress up and then when they start to recover it goes back down. And that's the good thing about Gillian Beret, if anything is to speak about it, but it's a very acute condition because they will actually start to get paralyzed and we need to be aggressive and to treat this condition very aggressively within the first four weeks. If we don't treat it within the first four weeks, this patient can end up on a ventilator because the paralyzation actually gets to the lungs and th that becomes an acute problem. And once it gets to the lungs, we're managing them onto a ventilator. And this can go from anywhere from two weeks to two years. And that two years of time of being on a ventilator, we're trying to prevent future complications from either a trach or a, a pneumonia and different things. If we're successful in that treatment, they will basically retain their, their lung capacity and then the paralyzation will start to move on down. And they're actually able to walk again after this if we can treat it aggressively. So they're gonna go through these three different phases. You'll have the acute phase, which is the first you know, four weeks of this. They will have a plateau period where no real change happens. And then they'll have the recovery phase, which is about three, up to two years of time. So Gillian Barre, what's the presentation? What does it look like? Well, think slow and low, like symptoms. So slow, like decreased heart rate. You know, decrease uh, uh, blood pressure. Okay. Also, uh, decrease deep tendon reflexes, and that's very indicative of Gillian Barre. Is that deep tendon reflexes are zeros to ones, really low. And what we tend to do is we need to assess this situation because what happens is that this patient is presenting, and they have these types of symptoms where they can't feel their feet and they're having this paralyzation and they basically feel it basically progressing up their body and we have to be starting to figure out what is going on with this patient and so there's some basic things that we we tend to do is, is that we might do a spinal tap and what we're going to do on a spinal tap is that we're going to assess what's going on neuro wise for this patient and we're going to look at that spinal tap fluid and what we generally will see is that the patient will generally have a uh, high proteins, so positive proteins in that, and they'll have WBCs. And that is um, indicative of generally viral in, in condition. Uh, Gillian Barre, the onset of that acute period is usually pretty much um, you're given it, especially for the NCLEX. Um, those reasons of causing an onset of Gillian Barre would be a virus, a recent surgery, or an illness, or um, a vaccination. And so when we talked about in previous lectures, we talked about with NCLEX, and you're given a perfect scenario. A patient has a history of uh, vaccination and currently presents with um, decreased uh, um, feeling in their feet, feelings of paralyzation, what they're really saying is Gillian Barre. And, you know, that's the good thing about Gillian Barre as far as the NCLEX is concerned, is you'll have that presentation showing up and the patient presenting with this this problem of paralyzation below their, on the lower extremities. So what do we do? We said we do a spinal tap, but we also need to check this uh, uh, these deep tendon reflexes, and, and how do we do that? We do that through an EMG test, electromyography, which basically will take the tissue, and it's going to um, 
cause impulses onto that tissue. And what's going to have is, is on the reflexes, and the reflexology is not going to be really reflective. It's going to be, have a low amplitude. Now, NCLEX will never test you on it. It's just mainly to see that you know what an EMG test, and that's one of the ways that we figure out on Gilliam Murray. Another thing we might do is an EPS study, electrophysiology -physio study, which checks the, uh, the reaction of the muscles as well, which also will be low. Um, the big thing about the cognition of the patient is they're aware of what's going. So it's a very scary situation when they're um, losing control of their body because the fact is, is that as this paralyzation starts to go up in the body, once they start to have difficulty breathing and different things like that, and their heart rate is going down, they all start to feel it. And then they're quite aware of it, which is causes a lot of distress for these patients. So the anxiety starts to increase because the patient becomes uh, less responsive to any of the treatments. And what do we do and how do we treat a patient like this? We'll do several tests on this patient. One is called an EMG. And that EMG will, will basically test the uh, reflexes. And as we said, low is slow, and so they're going to have decreased deep tendon reflexes, so zero to one. Um, we also may do a physiology test, which tests the muscle reaction, which will also be low. And we'll do a, a lumbar puncture, which we talked about previously. But then we will bring in what's called the pig, and that is plasmapheresis. Now, plasmapheresis is basically a removal of plasma. Now, if you think about it, Guillain-Barre is an autoimmune condition that the body is basically attacking itself because it thinks there's this invader inside and it attacks the neurological structure, which causes this paralyzation. So we'll do a plasmapheresis on this patient, which is basically like hemodialysis. And the problem with plasmapheresis is, is that they lose volume. So blood pressure is, is key to monitor when they already have a low blood pressure because of the neurological condition. And also uh, with plasmapheresis, they lose calcium. So hypocalcemia becomes a problem. And hypocalcemia is generally acute. Um, and what else can we do? We can do IgG, which is immunoglobulins. And remember, the patient already has an autoimmune condition that is attacking to bo the body. And so what we do is we do the plasmapheresis to remove all the plasma out. And then what we have to do is we have to support that plasma with new IgG or immunoglobulins to support the body. If these treatments become unsuccessful, what we have to do is, is that um, the patient is going to progress. And like we said before, as the patient is becoming more paralyzed, they actually start to um, lose their ability to start to breathe. And so what happens is we need to put them on a ventilator. And the big v issue with the ventilator is, is that now they could, they could have risk of ventilator complications like pneumonia um, because they're going to be on a long-term ventilator. And, th and this is the plateau period. And this plateau period generally lasts about two weeks. Once on a ventilator, we're going to manage this patient uh, aggressively. And what we're going to do is that we're going to maintain them. We might still do some plasmapheresis or some IgG. However, once they enter into the uh, plateau phase, there's nothing that's really going to change on this patient. So they're going to be on a ventilator. And now the issue with the ventilator is, is that might last up to two weeks, up to two years of time. And once they're on a ventilator, it's very important to start to manage their lungs and to continually testing you know, uh, their deep tendon reflexes, uh, checking neural checks to make sure that, you know, to see whether or not is this progression, remember what we said before, we said Gillian goes from the ground up so what the last thing they'll lose is their their lungs so that's usually the first thing they start to see and so when they're on a ventilator um, they might start to breathe above the ventilator that's a good sign because that means that they're actually starting to build up their reserves and they're able to use their lungs in order to breathe now the big complication with this once they're on the ventilator is that they they don't die on the ventilator or they die from complications on the ventilator because They'll have an ET tube first, which is an endotracheal tube that will go into their, their, th their throat down to their lungs. But that's not only for about two weeks, because after a period of time, they can't stay on an ET tube. So we need to actually put into a trach. And so what happens now, a trach is a tube that goes into the uh, trachea and actually um, ventilates them through there. Unfortunately, that patient will need to be on that trach for a period of time as they 
start to recover during this time. Now, that recovery could be a long time, and that patient uh, will need aggressive pulmonary pulmonary hygiene and turn cough deep breathing and um, vent uh, management. So a lot of times they'll be brought to a vent facility where that patient is managed long term. So that's why turn cough deep breathing is the most important for these patients and we start to um, we start to manage them. So what's the recovery and the relapse be? Well, the recovery period can last, like I said, up to two years. So that patient will be, like I said, on a ventilator. Once they're on a ventilator, as they start to get their um, lung capacity starting to come back, they'll, they'll be taken off that ventilator and we're gonna keep on turn off deep breathe. They might start on neurontins or other neuroleptic th type of medications um, that will help with the neurons and they need to be taught about uh, poten potential for relapses. And what are those relapses? What could cause a relapse? Well, it's the same things that cause um, the onset. That would be viruses, sicknesses, illnesses, surgeries, or um, vaccinations. So these types of patients who had a history of Guillain-Barre um, are usually uh, tread lightly when they um, when they get vaccinations or they have surgeries, and and the uh, doctor is aware of it when they go down. And because the fact is is that this might cause a patient to have um, a, a relapse of this Guillain-Barre. So let's wrap it all up together and let's talk about this the nursing seven with Guillain-Barre. Well. Um, Gillian Barre can happen to basically anybody. They could be walking around and suddenly lose their, uh, have a loss of feeling in their feet, and they will go to the doctor's office for that. They start to present, but it progresses rather quickly. Like I said, that first acute phase can be up to four weeks, and it just goes r rapidly, where they actually have slow like symptoms, and they might actually be, you know, uh, at home think they have something going on and then they could actually be in the hospital as well because they could be a post-op patient with a history of galen beret male or female it doesn't really differentiate although females tend to be a little bit higher and um it, the ages tend to plateau around 50 55. Uh, symptoms three, uh, paralyzation at the lower legs right so they have a lower legs bilateral paralyzation moving up that's the precursor. Generally, um, they might have a surgery, recent surgery, recent vaccination, recent illness, or a history of Guillain-Barre. And that's why on flu shots, we ask that question. Do you have a history of Guillain-Barre? Because this is the presentation that might happen. Precipitating factor is usually a history or the surgery. Main complication is ventilation. They're going to lose their respiratory status. And so the acute three would be is when they're having difficulty breathing um, because they've actually lost their uh, ability to breathe. The other acute three would be uh, vent complications or um, patient is presenting post-surgical and suddenly starts to have these uh, bilateral uh, paralyzations. Um, will they be on a monitor? Uh, yeah, because the heart rate will be low. Uh, they might need atropine while they're for that management. Blood pressure is definitely going to be managed because blood pressure will be low. Labs, uh, like I said, the spinal tap was most important. Uh, positioning, usually high followers, semi followers. Uh, e EMG tests, a, a EPS study, a spinal tap, um, IV fluids, maybe uh, IgG, right, Immun immunoglobulins, um, and fluid support, medications. Um, generally, we're going to write, let it run its course. Uh, we'll monitor their labs and everything like that. Um, however, th their vital signs, mainly blood pressure and mean arterial pressure, they, they don't have post complications like mean arterial pressure and then they go into acute kidney injury. Um, Fluid status, not necessarily. Pulses, more about reflexes. Uh, reflexes, generally, uh, decreased deep tendon reflexes, and that's priority. So you're going to see zero ones, you know, uh, when normal is usually around two plus. Um, mentation, they're aware of what's going on with Guillain Barre. Um, heart rate will be low, uh, lungs, respirations as they have difficulty breathing. Uh, kidney problems with acute kidney injury from hypotensive, surgical, uh, that they could be post-surgical and have Guillain-Barre. A lot of times they, this person doesn't get discharged, walk out of the hospital right away. They go to a long-term facility and they will end up in the ICU and, or CCU while they're in the hospital. 
and then they'll be transferred to another facility. All right, that's about it. My name's Camp with Nursing Camp, and um, this is my uh, overview of Gillian Bure from the study sheets found at nursingcamp.com. Uh, become a member. Uh, follow me on social media, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.